Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to introduce fractions. But of course, before we get started, we gotta get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah, we're doing your favorite subject, fractions. <sighs> All right, Charlie, quit foot around. Let's get started right there. Okay, here's a number line. Let's put another line below it. And now let's take one whole and divide it into two equal parts. In other words, we are doing one divided by two. And remember, earlier in the semester I said division problems are represented by fractions. So that division problem, one divided by two, is actually represented by the fraction one half. The one, which is a number on the top of the fraction, is called the numerator, and the two, which is the number on the bottom of the fraction, is called the denominator. Now notice, it takes two of these halves to make up one whole number, right? Makes sense because the fraction two halves is equivalent to the division problem two divided by two, which is equivalent to one. Now when you have fractions that represent quantities that are one or larger, we call those improper fractions. Proper fractions, like one half, lie between zero and one on the number line. Let's continue on to some more improper fractions. Let's add another half, and that gives us three halves, and that's equivalent to the mixed number one and one half. Now notice we are using the word and. We say one and one half. Why do we call these mixed numbers? Because they're mixed with a whole number part and a fractional part. Now let's add another half. That gives us four halves, and four divided by two is two, and so four halves is equivalent to two wholes. If we add another half, that gives us five halves, and that's two and one half, and add one more half, and that gives us six halves, which is equivalent to three. That makes sense because six divided by two is three. Now let's talk a little bit about mixed numbers and the improper fraction representation of mixed numbers. Here, we have three halves. Now remember, we saw earlier that one and one half is equivalent to three halves. Well, how do you change a mixed number to its improper fraction representation? Well, here's the procedure. We have halves here, right, because we have one and one half. And now we take two and multiply it by one. And that gives us two. What are you doing there? Well, when you do two times one, you're figuring out how many of those halves it takes up to make up your whole number part. In this case, we have one as our whole number in our mixed number representation. And it does take two halves to make up the one whole. So that's why when you do two times one, you get two. But the mixed number has an additional fractional part, an additional one half. So we have to add that additional one half. And when you look at your calculation here, two plus one is three, and you have halves. So one and one half is equivalent to the improper fraction, three halves. There you go. Now let's take one whole and divide it into three equal parts. That's equivalent to one divided by three, or the fraction one-third. And notice, it takes three of these thirds to make up one whole number. Now let's add another third. That gives us four-thirds. That's equivalent to one and one-third. If we add another third, that's five-thirds. That's equivalent to one and two-thirds. We add another one-third, that's six-thirds, that's equivalent to two. We add another third, what do we get, Charlie? Seven-thirds, very nice, that's equivalent to two and one-third. What do we get if we add another one, Charlie? Eight-thirds, very nice, and that's equivalent to two and two-thirds. All right, Charlie, bring us home, what do we get? Nine-thirds, very nice, and that makes sense. Nine divided by three is equivalent to the number three. Now, let's try some problems. We have two-thirds plus three-thirds. Now, Charlie. If you have two-thirds and somebody gives you three more thirds, how many thirds do you have? Five-thirds. That's it. It's that easy. Okay, so if we have two-thirds and we add three more thirds, we obviously end up at five-thirds. Well, how do you show your work with a calculation? Well, we have thirds and we work with the numerators. We simply say two plus three and put that in our numerator. And two plus three is equal to five, and so our answer is five-thirds. There you go. So your denominator does not change, right? Now suppose we had eight-thirds subtract 
four thirds. Well, if we have eight thirds and we take away four thirds, we're obviously going to end up at four thirds. That's it. Well, how do you show your work? We're working with thirds and now notice we work with the numerators. Eight subtract four and eight subtract four is four and our answer is four thirds. So there you go. That's a brief introduction of fractions. Part one. So we hope you come back for part two. See you again soon.